The Oahu housing market is slowing down. The Federal Reserve is getting aggressive on raising interest rates and mortgage interest rates have hit a 20 year high. I'll tell you why I don't think we're gonna have a housing crash coming up next. Hi, I'm Scott Startsman with the High Estates team and 20-year Wahoo Realtor. I'll give you three reasons I don't believe we're going to have a housing crash, but there probably will be some kind of a correction. The first reason I don't think that we're going to have a housing crash is because homeowners aren't in trouble with their mortgages or with their homes. So if we look at this first slide, lending standards have changed significantly since the early 2000s. Product risk or the types of loans that were available and borrower risk that the amount of risk borrowers were willing to take was much higher, as you can see from this graph, all the way up until 2008. Once 2000, the 2008 crash happened, then there were a lot of regulations that were put in place. And as you can see, the borrower and product risk has significantly declined since then. And what does that mean? Loan guidelines are much tighter. It's much harder to get a loan. Borrowers had a headache coming out of the 2008 crash and were more conservative with how they were purchasing homes, putting more cash down, et cetera. If we look at this next slide, lending guidelines started to get tighter as well. If this graph shows the number of loans that were created with borrowers that had a FICO score of less than 620, um, as you can see prior to 2008, there were way more loans being taken or given to borrowers with less than a 620 FICO score. Once 2008 hit, there were significant, significantly fewer loans being given to borrowers with what we consider uh, sub A credit scores. The risk in loan products was significantly less coming out of to the 2008 bubble and going forward. Anybody that bought a home in the last decade most likely ended up in 2019 with a mortgage interest rate of around 4.54%. If they had a million dollar mortgage, that mortgage payment was $5,000 a month. Once COVID happened, mortgage interest rates dropped significantly and most likely people either purchasing a new home or people staying in their existing home, they refinance that mortgage into a new mortgage and that new mortgage interest rate was somewhere between two and a half and 3%. On this example, we used 2.75%, 2, 2 which was the average. And on a million dollar loan, that payment was $4,082 a month. So if someone had a home prior to COVID and refinanced that mortgage, their mortgage payment essentially dropped $1,000 a month making the making the the mortgage payment significantly re less risky if we look at this next slide the forbearance numbers which became an issue during covid where people did not they were able to take a pause on paying their mortgages um, that that number has dwindled down to a very insignificant amount i've talked with the local banks here the number is insignificant for them so they're Overall, there is significantly very little risk in the marketplace. What it's led to is the highest percentage of equity for homeowners in their homes in the last 50 years. The second reason I don't think we're going to have a, a housing crash is because new home construction is way down. We're short on inventory and the cost to build are up. So if we look at this next slide, if you look at this graph here, I've highlighted it in 2007. At the height of that market, we had a peak in new home construction and we dropped off a cliff starting in 2008 to the lowest point in history of new home construction. What's happened is we've been trying to play catch up for, for the last decade in building new homes to keep up with the, in, with the demand that's needed out there. And part of the reason for the run up in, in housing prices is we we haven't been building enough new home construction to keep up with the demand that's out there for homes. As you can see on the graph on the right, we've we've increased some, but it's but analysts say that it's going to take us a decade to get back to the levels of new 
building new home construction to satisfy the demand that's out there. The problem is, is now, now that interest rates are going up, inflation is going up, the cost to build a new home is up 20% from last year. So a home that costs a developer 500,000 to build last year now takes 600,000 to build this year. Also, the revolving line of credits that the developers use to purchase the materials to build the homes is higher now. So the overall cost to build a home has gone up with mortgage interest rates having gone up. There's less buyers that can af afford the homes and with interest rates going up, borrowers can afford less homes. So what you're going to see is builders actually building fewer homes, which is not going to solve the issue of the housing supply shortage that we've had. The third reason I don't think we're going to have a crash is because the housing inventory shortage won't get much better. I just showed you why builders are going to build less homes. That's about 10% of the inventory on average nationally. As you can see from this next slide, mortgage interest rates got to a historic low around 2020 and 2021, and we've now started to spike up. Come Jan from January of 2022 to present, we went from 2.75% mortgage interest rate and we were now above 7%. What that means for someone who has an existing home and an existing mortgage at 2.75%, as we can see by this graph on the left, if they had an interest rate of 2.75% and a million dollar mortgage, their monthly payment was $4,082 a month. Move forward to what we're looking at for today's interest rates. If that homeowner who has a 2.75% interest rate sells their home and buys their neighbor's home across the street that's the exact same home that they've always eyed for years and they take pay the same price put the same down payment take the same million dollar mortgage their mortgage interest rate is going to be 6.75 percent now that mortgage payment is six thousand four hundred eighty six dollars a month if you compare that that's almost a fifteen hundred dollar a month increase in the mortgage payment for the exact same loan amount. So what's gonna happen is that's gonna cause sellers, potential sellers to stay in place and to not bring their home on the market. They're gonna decide that cost is not worth doing. And so you're gonna see fewer homes on the market. The people that will bring the homes on the market are people that need to sell and there will be much fewer uh, people bringing their homes on the market. As I discussed earlier, there is not a lot of risk in the market. Homeowners have a lot of equity built up. So you're going to probably see a significant number of people staying in place and not bringing their homes on the market. What that means and what we're seeing in the marketplace now is if you look at the number of active listings for sale on Oahu, we have 625 active homes right now. And compare that to 2019 prior to COVID when we actually were in a normalized market we had 5.8% price appreciation. There were 1,621 homes on the market. So as you can see, we have a significant restriction in the number of active homes on the market. The same thing is happening on the condo side. We have 1,011 condos on the market, whereas in 2019, we had 2,446 condos on the market in an appreciating, in a price appreciating market at that time. So the more the interest rates increase, the more home seller, potential home sellers are gonna stay in place and not make the move and not bring their home on the market. What this also means right now in our market on Oahu is homes on average, homes and condos on average are selling for 100% of what the sellers are selling them for. The inventory is significantly restricted. There's still more buyers in the market than there are sellers even though interest rates are going up. And in doing so, 50% of the homes on the market are being, 50% of the homes that are being sold are being bid up over the list price. And 30% of the condos that are being sold are being bid up over the listing price. In summary, I don't think we're gonna have a housing crash and that's due to all the things that I just discussed in the video. I do think we're gonna have a correction. Obviously we're in what I would call a housing recession because the number of sales are down, the sales volume is down. But our price appreciation right now, year to date, we are up 14% from the same time last year for single family homes and 7% for this month 
compared to the same month last year. We are decelerating, but it is going to take a, sig a year to possibly more to normalize on this market. That's why I don't think we're going to have a housing crash, but more of a housing correction. Once again, I'm Scott Startsman with the High Estates team. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe to my channel below. And if you have any Oahu real estate needs, feel free to reach out anytime. Look forward to hearing from you.